The love of rewardably difficult paths in life can be made possible by the efforts made to instill this love from a parent or guardian during the young formative years of childhood, provided grace being equal. And that is one of the reasons a man named Leonard Euler can say, now I would have less distractions when he lost his right eye but still increased his productivity after. What's up people of this weird planet called Earth? Welcome to episode 42 of HMI Podcast. I'm your humble host, Damlari Mapa. And without further ado, let's learn about today's influential human, the one-eyed mathematician. Born on the 15th of April, 1707, in Basel, Switzerland, the first child of Protestant minister Paulus Euler. Shortly after the birth of Leonard, they moved to Rear End, a few miles from Basel, where Eula grew up with his two younger sisters and subsequently the last born, which was a boy. During his childhood, he learned maths from his father, who had, who had keen interest in mathematics and had taken courses with notable mathematician Jacob Bernoulli while studying to become a theologian, which he also later wanted his son to become. Leonard had a very solid background in mathematics. He even had to take private mathematics lessons as the school he attended in 1713, Latin Grammar School, Basel, didn't teach mathematics. As one of the brilliant minds of his time, Hula entered the University of Basel when he was just 13 years old in 1720. Interestingly, he studied with Joan Bernoulli, the younger brother of the man who his father learned some mathematics lessons from. Jacob Bernoulli. Leonard's father wanted him to study theology, but due to his exceptional talent in mathematics, Leonard, alongside his mathematical mentor, Joan Bernoulli, were able to convince his father to allow him to focus on mathematics instead of becoming a pastor. Little did his father know that this consent would make his son one of the most influential personalities of his time and after his time. In 1727, Leonard entered the Paris Academy Prize competition for the first time. The problem posed that year was finding the best way to place masts on a ship. Pere Berger, who is termed the father of naval architecture, won the prize that year, while Leonard got second. Subsequently, Leonard would enter the same competition 15 times throughout his lifetime, and he won 12 times. Impressive. Leonard became a professor of physics in 1731 after a series of events in his career at the Russian Academy in St. Petersburg and then became the head of mathematics department in 1733. In 1741, he left for Berlin to take up a post at the Berlin Academy. He lived in Berlin for about 25 years where he wrote several hundred articles. During his years in Berlin from 1741 to 1766, Leonard was at the peak of his active career as he had written 360 works, 275 of which were published. Among them were over 100 memoirs which were sent to St. Petersburg Academy in Russia where he was still retained as a member and paid annual stipend although he later returned to St. Petersburg Academy when the political situation in Russia stabilized after Catherine the Great's accession to the throne. He spent his last years in Russia and after numerous achievements in physics, astronomy, engineering, music theory, mathematics and other fields, despite almost being totally blind for a significant part of his adult life. As everyone will, Leonard died on September 18th 1783, aged 76. He died from brain hemorrhage, being referred to as one of the greatest mathematicians in history and of the 18th century, writing almost 900 publications. He was credited for popularizing the Greek word pi and solving so many scientific problems. I could go on and on, but that will be it on today's short episode of History's Most Influential Humans, guys. I hope you learned a thing or two from it. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. First Saturday of April, by God's grace. Damilari Mapa, out.